Our oceans provide an extremely important source of food for many hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. So the health of the seas, the equilibrium, is very, very important. Well, you know, worldwide we've got ourselves into an unholy mess. We had fished the stock down from a very, very high level to a level that it was almost near collapse. In a world of seven billion people, we've just got to do a lot more about the environment. So if we don't fish responsibly, in essence, we've squandered one of the greatest sources of protein that our planet has. Between 1997 and 1999, the MSC consulted over 200 scientists, environmentalists and stakeholders to create the MSC Environmental Standard for Sustainable Fishing, a set of principles and criteria against which the sustainability of a fishery can be judged. When the fishery goes into full assessment, it means that they think that they meet the standard, but they need an independent check on whether they do. So the fishery has to employ a certification body who employ in turn a team of experts to come in and ask questions about the fishery and assess its performance against a set of scoring indicators that relate to the, the three principles. To be certified as sustainable, the fishery must meet all three of these core principles. The first of these is that fish stocks and the amount of fish being caught are maintained at sustainable levels. Amongst ourselves, we decided that we had to reduce the number of boats, and we introduced an effort limitation scheme, which has later been adopted by the government. We maintain our own in-house scientific program. We employ a number of scientists. We've introduced monitoring systems so that around about 1990-92, we had reached maximum sustainable yield. And we've operated very stably since then. Secondly, the fishery must minimize its environmental impact and not jeopardize the supporting ecosystem. It's just as important that other species in the ecosystem continue to flourish, as well as a species that is the main target of the fishery. By the standard incorporating elements, bycatch, food webs, habitats, the seabird bycatch on the one hand has been significantly reduced. This was a, a really big challenge facing the fishery. About 18,000 birds were killed per year. In particular, albatross mortality has been reduced by 85%, so a really significant win that was facilitated through the MSC certification. And finally, the third principle demands that there is an effective fishery management system in place. This ensures that the fishery meets all legal requirements, such as national and international laws, but also increases the fishery's resilience by ensuring that the management system is capable of responding to any changing circumstances. We needed data on everything in terms of the management, in terms of were we now behaving as we say we were, were we being as selective as we said we were. We now fill in logbooks, logging all the discard we have so the data can all be fed back into the system. We also are now part of the catch quota scheme which we have cameras on board. So every fish that comes on board my ship is now on camera. You've got to be sure as an industry that you're sustainable, the management systems are in place and you're taking care of the wider ecosystem. To determine if each principle is met, the MSC standard comprises 31 performance indicators which are used by the certifiers to score the fishery. Each of those performance indicators will have a 60 level, an 80 level and a 100 level. 60 is the bare pass, so anything that doesn't meet 60, actually the, the fishery automatically fails. For every single indicator they have to get better than a 60 score. They've got to average better than an 80 score for each of the principles. If they, they score 100 on, on a few things that'll help their average, but um, the overall average has still got to be better than 80. If it scores between 60 and 80 for a particular indicator, it's fallen short. What that triggers then is a condition that the fishery has to agree to meet to get that particular aspect up to an 80 score during the period of certification. Once the certifier is confident the fishery meets all three core principles, a process which takes on average 18 months, the fishery may be certified as sustainable. To make sure the assessment process is consistent and reliable, the certifiers need to be accredited to undertake assessments and their performance is regularly reviewed. The assessment team will write a report and that, that's 
that report is subject to further scientific review by another independent group of scientists. So there's actually quite a lot of quality control. Since fishery science is a dynamic field, the MSC is always consulting experts and its partners to constantly improve the program, ensuring that it is always taking into account new developments in science and fisheries management. The process of certification of any fishery actively encourages stakeholder input. By operating a third-party certification system, the MSC has no financial incentive to certify a fishery and remains completely impartial in the process. These robust criteria have been used to assess fisheries around the world and now there are well over 100 fisheries that have been certified sustainable against the MSC standard. Way back in 2006, the industry probably wasn't as best placed as it could have been in terms of selectivity. MSC was on my horizon at that time. We then entered into full assessment, uh, and the full assessment process means that they come up, they interview me, fishermen, compliance, the scientists, the managers, and they take the information, they go away, go through it, and actually work out if the way you fish your stock and the system, the regimes within which you fish it, is actually at the levels that would attract the MSC certification. It was a very tense time during that period to see you know, if it was going to work out, it wasn't going to work out. And obviously, we were successful. And here we are today now with a fully certified haddock fishery, which is our main uh, whitefish fishery in Scotland. There are three conditions, because we did score less than 80 in three separate uh, units. One was to ensure that the stocks remained sustainable. The other was to ensure that we mitigated bycatch as much as we possibly could, which we think we've done. And the other one was to report all the discards that we, that we as, a, as fishery, were throwing over the side. So these are the three conditions, and they're conditions that, that we now think we've met. It should be said that, that getting certification is quite a challenge. We always see up in Scotland now we're doing the right things, so having the MSC status for, for Haddock allows us publicly to demonstrate that. But not only that, it's allowed the people that we sell our product to to sell it to the marketplace as MSC certified. So it's opened up new product lines and new business for the area. We were first certified in 2004 and certified again in 2009. When we were first certified, the fishery was at its highest ever peak. Since then, we went into quite an acute decline. However, over the last three or four years, we are climbing out at a tremendously rapid rate. The recovery, I believe, is quite incredible. And I believe it is largely due to the measures that we've taken under the umbrella of MSC certification. And really, if we apply the MSC principles, they give us everything we want to operate sustainably. I believe that much of the failure or the crisis that the world's fisheries are in have been an over-reliance on the regulatory system. What the MSC has provided is a, is a much needed incentive. Fishermen will follow the market. If you develop a, a premium market for sustainable fish, they will have to go there. The other thing that it's done is shifted the burden of responsibility from squarely lying on government shoulders to somewhere between government and, and the fishing industry. The MSC certification has actually become part of the way we do business, part of the way we think. I think what we often forget is that our oceans belong to all of us, all the way from seafood consumers, restaurants, retailers, fishermen, government, policy. We all have that collective responsibility. Our challenge now is actually to return equilibrium back to the seas, to make them healthy, so we have something worthwhile to hand to the next generation. We need a future in front of us. We're fed up of going up and down, up and down. We want a bit of continuity. And all the fishermen you'll talk to up in the northeast of Scotland realise now that their wealth is not in the fish they land to market, but the health of the stocks they leave behind. <laughs>